We're having a little bit of a power struggle. Sometimes I'm forced off the boat to get some supplies. Grab a bus to town to see some random but interesting things in Playa del Carmen. There's a tall pole in the center of tourist town, and these guys were spinning around it. Playa del Carmen is a good illustration of a rapidly growing and expanding city due to tourism. With the population exploding to five times its size since the year 2000. The special attractions include nearby and easy to access cenotes, beaches, ruins, and as well as we'll get to see eventually, the diving destination of nearby Isla Cozumel. These marquesitas looked great, but I had already eaten dinner. Watching other people eat, watching other people play. Yes, I really know how to party it up. Anyways, back to real life. Back to sanding. I started out with my 5 inch Milwaukee random orbital sander. Next, I tried a little bit of sanding pad on the multi tool in some smaller spots that require a finer tip. After that, I went for the wire brush on the drill, which removes some thicker varnished areas in the crevices and corners, but leaves a rougher finish. With excruciating hindsight, we might have invested in some good scrapers and a heat gun, but the wire brush has done wonders to remove husking varnish without the heat. Here's a nice little craggy spot that Robbie had already scraped a bit with the knife. Then back to the fun part, sanding a bit with the sanding net that we'd heard about from sail life. But here in Mexico, we had to improvise and cut down some larger sized ones. And they didn't seem to want to hold on at all. Back to old fashioned sandpaper. I must admit, the Prow project has been filled with its fair share of happy little mistakes. I've used many different methods and tools, not all have been working. These little mistakes will have wasted a lot of time, caused a lot of strife, but later on when sailing, I'll be able to say that I'm happy. I found some delaminated fiberglass cloth that was easily peeling off the wood. There were even some pretty gnarly wet spots where the water was being held in between the wood and the fiberglass, either from rain or from the AMA interior itself having been waterlogged. So at least now that was all good and ready to be dried out for a while. It was a great time to take a break from the power tools because the electricity stopped working on the property. Instead of throwing away the whole wire, luckily you can find spare parts and I'm trying to put it back on. Day one of power outage was actually statewide, but day two of the power outage was just our own cord crapping out on us. If you just pull it in and tighten it, it makes it very easy for you to pull out and then the wires can fry. So you can go around making the copper wrap around the replacement properly. Sand, 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 peel, 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 then sand, sand, sand again.
and then it was into the interior of our big boat in Esperado. Robbie was taking apart the engine a little bit, not to repair it, but rather to get some remaining electrical wire out. This, these copper pipes here are the hydraulic pipes. And once we remove the engine, I think we're going to check them and if they are weak or they are very badly corroded, we're going to cap, we're going to remove the inside steering system and just cap these pipes off so then the steering will just be done from the outside. Everything must go. All electrical wiring, even the greasy, nasty stuff under the engine. Robbie tinkered for a little bit more with our electrical panel. There's wasp nests inside, inside the, they're quite nice actually, it's like pottery. Meaning layers, you can see tick 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 tick. This one hasn't opened yet, there might still be something in it. And in taking out those last bits of electrical stuff, we resolved to completely remodel the starboard side of our saloon. Advantage of the big boat, you have bottomless holes for your junk in. The small storage cupboard and chart table hiding some of the final wires were great junk collectors. We started cutting them out. With that newly open space, we would be able to make a simple bed mirroring the other side of the room. Because having a large, comfy space to sit, lie down, and to host visitors is a paramount feature to us on a boat. So I just cycled here with a, a bag full of gold bricks. It feels like gold bricks. This is what we use to put 12 volt plugs around the boat. We use this for lights and other stuff. Mostly to move the small and further around. Hey, People say there are better plugs you can find nowadays, but unfortunately, everything still comes in these plugs. Like most of your, it's very cheap, most of your cheap appliances for camping and boating still comes with cigarette lighters. If anyone out there knows a better system than cigarette lighter and cigarette plugs that are cheap and easy to find, let us know. I would love to hear what are the be better solution to plug 12 volt things out there. He's it's helping you open it. Yeah, he's helping me. We now have 12, 14, and 16 gauge wire to run in the boat, thanks to our previous wish list hitters last month, and our patron Brian from this time. Along with all the other electronic stuff, he sent us fuse panels so that any electrical shorts won't result in a fire. <laughs> as well as an entirely new switch panel, because our old one has wasps growing in it. And this one in particular comes pre-wired with fuses. You have to kind of pull them out to see if they're broken usually, because you can't see them from the top, but well, these ones you can kind of see, you can see straight away from the top, and they kind of get like milky white inside when they bust. These ones are harder. Nice, new, crisp electrical equipment to keep the upcoming system safe. Eyelets and crimps and male and female ones. We use these a lot. We use the, the quick connects, both the male and the female ones, which I like to put them in a lot of places that I might have to disconnect stuff eventually. And we you will... Kind of like temporary connection. We will need a lot of these. The ones that go on, on these, are on the screw. Robbie fired up the new board with one of our Milwaukee batteries, and it was just like Christmas time. 12 volts of Christmas. With all this remodeling going on, the only question is where to put the new power panel. That's a possibility. This, this wall is easy. It's all about ease of, of installation. We thought about installing it airplane cockpit style on the roof. It kind of makes sense maybe to just utilize some of the holes that are already there on the side. I think this is a good spot. And planned out our new saloon arrangement as well. That's five feet. 
Almost laid down, I think. Oh, chest. I just don't make it. It's like, fuck, if I could just move it like a couple of inches. I'm sure you'd fit perfectly in it. 